Mr. Investalot, welcome back to the channel, baby. The big bingo daddy's back. Okay, guys, today is going to be a quick video update just telling you what's going on in the Twitter space. It's all about the bingo, baby. Remember, none of this is financial advice. Please hit the thumbs up. Please click the subscribe button as well. It really helps out the channel. And if you can support the channel, please click the join button. It's only 99 cents a month, and I really appreciate you guys. Cytopia, a place where cowboys go to shine. So who's living in Cytopia at the moment? Well, let's take a look. We got a couple more juice. Ooh, see institutional investors it looks like just a small few positions were opened we can see here on the 28th 100 shares that's laughable 21,070 shares now there are also new positions from the day before on the 27th of april with 12,000 shares and 22,700 shares so these are quite conservative we know a few retail investors who have got so many more shares than this but some institutions just dip their toes in the water first then they carry out their full dd and then they start to load the boat when they build out their conviction next let's talk about Twitter. So today we had a juicy little Mama Cita presentation. And when I say Mama Cita, I mean Papa Cita. Ravindra Kohi, you can see here, MD, PhD. Deo actually live streamed this. He's um, over at Frankler Investment on the YouTube channel. So if you want to watch the whole presentation, you can watch it on his YouTube channel. Man Like Vibes is retweeting Bionanogenomics. And basically what they were talking about was saying, in total, the consortium found 11 structural variations with Sapphire involving 38 genes implicated in immunity and inflammatory response response, resistance of the lungs to pathogens and viral replication and spread, which may explain why some C19 patients are asymptomatic while others can get very ill. Asymptomatic in layman's term, they basically said that they found some structural variations explaining genetic probably predisposition to um, C19, while some people may get no symptoms. So they're basically stating, you know, what is the reason why some people get um, no symptoms and why others can get very ill? And they said that they found 11 structural variations involving 30 38 genes. So while some people are immune and they have resistance to pathogens in their lungs, others get an inflammatory response and can get extremely ill. They followed up with a quote from Dr. Kohi in the question and answering round, and he said that OGM optical genome mapping is going to make a fundamental difference in our understanding of how cancers are started and can build up resistance to treatment. Thank you, Dr. Kohi and Dr. Sahaj Power, for this exciting presentation and potentially life saving results. Also, over in the Twitter space, Messenger of Moistville aka Brennan the MOM. He was retweeting and sharing news regarding the Vertebrate Genomes Project VGP and a verified Twitter channel HHMI. HHMI is Hughes Hughes Medical Institute. They tweeted that the Vertebrate Genomes Project is one of the biggest projects in biology today, reading the genome of every known vertebrate. Now, the project has reached its first major milestone, near complete high quality genomes of 25 species. And if you guys saw my previous video with the Vertebrate Genome Lab when we were covering the VGP project as well, you'll see I covered them when they first uh, looked into manta rays. I spoke about all the other species that haven't been seen on Earth, haven't been mapped out. I said, how about optical map everything? Plant, animal, bacteria, virus. Take a look at the bigger picture. They actually responded to me. They said, thanks for the feature, Mr. Investalot. We are delighted to see your enthusiasm for our genomes. You are totally right. There are so many species out there to cover. The possibilities are endless. Here's more on the VGP if you're interested. So as you guys may know, the Vertebrate Genome Lab, they've done a manta rays. They've also done snakes. Ooh, slammy. They've also done a clouded leopard sample and actually found this juicy tweet. So it's actually this tweet uh, down here. I was looking at Khalil Lawless. So this guy has just said, it takes a lot more than just long reads to make a finished genome. Great work from Eric Jarvis and the Genome Arc team. Oh baby, that looks like shots fired at Arc saying long reads are the future. It takes a lot more than long reads to make a finished genome. Genome. So as you guys may know, the whole of this team, the Vertebrate Genome Lab, alongside everybody tagged here, you're talking about Rockefeller University, Sanger Institute, the Max Planck Press. All of these guys are using the Sapphire machine on one of the biggest projects known to man. Just to show those of you that don't know, this is the Rockefeller University website. And if you scroll down the Vertebrate Genome Laboratory, you can see Bio Nanogenomics Sapphire machine right there in the corner. Similarly, if you look at the Welcome Sanger Institute, who was also named in that tweet, if you scroll down on this website, here where they've got the long read sequencing on their website you'll be able to see bio nanogenomics here and they're talking about the sapphire instrument alongside optical genome mapping services and on bio nanogenomics website you'll be able to see also in events and seminars unraveling the secrets hidden in the bat genomes and this is from michael hiller phd at the max planck institute in dresden germany so basically bio nanogenomics is being used in one of the biggest projects in biology today so they finally reached you know a major
major milestone with 25 species, but there are so many thousands more. There are actually millions more that we haven't discovered. And MOM was on one tonight. He was putting someone in their place because they deserved it. He said, hey, Albert, put this in your pipe and smoke it. He was talking about this article showing how optical genome mapping technique by BioNanoGenomics spots more structural variations over 10KB than Illumina and PacBio combined. And they all said, <sighs> yeehaw cowboy. In other news, this was one of the most interesting things that I saw today because I haven't seen this before. Completely new to me. And Joe said completely new class of structural variants found with bionanogenomics and optical genome mapping OGM. So when we look at this here it says uncovering new complex variant classes. This is Pirgo. So what the heck is Pirgo? It's a new structural variant that they found and they've now classified, you know, absolutely new. So Deo wanted to know more about it and Joe said it's never been seen before it's really complex even he doesn't get it yet the person that found it named it after the greeks word for pillar also on the twitter space i showed you guys in an earlier video they were talking about optical genome mapping and they were talking about long read sequencing this was a kind of twitter debate by simon barnett some other people like uh, michael schwartz it was by easy bull asking some nice questions in there simon basically said i'm not aware of any data showing that novel variation found via ogm isn't also found by long read sequencing what was that study about 72% baby. The OGM study designs I've seen benchmark OGM against cytogenetics and or short reads whole genome sequencing. Meanwhile, many long read sequencing studies are benchmarked to short reads whole genome sequencing, demonstrating a delta in diagnosis yields. To which Joe Butler, the nano nozzle knight replied, the reason this data doesn't exist is that optical genome mapping is one fifth the cost of long read sequencing. We would welcome these studies going forward too. Interestingly, I think there aren't too many studies comparing long read sequencing to cytogenetics cytogenetics too. Hence the reason why everyone still uses microarrays etc. On the Twitter space they've been reiterating as well why it's important to find certain structural variations. As you can see here this is SPT BN1 PDG FRB fusion. This is just a funky name but he said if you find this rather large and complex genetic mutation you can stop the cancer cells growing with imatinib. B. This is tyrosine kinase inhibitor. In this case bionanogenomics found this mutation in a young child with B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So usually probably all the other cytogenetic traditional methods have missed this complex genetic mutation. But bionanogenomics found it and it saved this young child's life. Gold standard, cheaper, faster, more effective, gonna save lives in leukemia. Smooth workflow and discovering the undiscoverable, the complex genetic mutations, which was key to this kid's survival. Now finalizing all of this up, we can see here four hours ago, bionanogenomics has said again, save time and reveal more with Sapphire and BioNano Access. Take complex, time-consuming bioinformatics out of your process and discover new critical insights about your cancer research samples. Learn more and schedule a demo here. Baby, they're pushing themselves. They're pushing them, pushing them. Let's see more sales across the globe. So remember, none of this is financial advice, but these are my thoughts and feelings now. I think we're going to be killing it this year. With the kind of target that they've set for, I think it was 150 Sapphires by the year end, I think we're going to absolutely smash it. I think we're going to see more institutions start to pile in as they see us smash these sales because we're really starting to see more and more people appreciate the sapphire this one kind of smooth workflow smooth system cheaper faster and reveals more so some of you guys may know i think this is a strong buy as well as these analysts here you know i'm not going to be selling bio nanogenomics i'm going to keep accumulating shares and some of you may know that i just recently got a part-time job so i can buy as much nndm and bngo as possible i'm a long-term investor i can afford to park my money in these stocks i'm also high risk for high growth but i also believe these companies have so much potential so looking at the analysts three of them are saying strong buy they have an average price target in 12 months time of $13.92 and a high of $15 and a low of $12.75 this offers some juicy upside potential nearly 100 percent in 12 months i actually think it may be a little more than that um, over the 12 months we may finish this year on 20 dollars or so and this is all on all of the news of sales coming through you know more revenues and as it starts to be built out this optical g no mapping it starts to get put into guidelines with all of these upcoming milestones acting as catalysts too if you see here in 2021 q2 q3 and loads in q4 coming up these are all going to act as catalysts if we manage to meet these targets or we actually exceed these expectations of our milestone for example reach installed base of 150 systems a 50 percent increase over year end 2020 i think it's going to be a lot more than that and remember we're operating in an environment where it's quite difficult because there's not so many people back in 
the lab still. C19 is still wrecking havoc across the world. Actually going there to actually teach them how to use the system and to install these systems. It's quite difficult given the current climate, the pandemic, you know, everything being shut as well. Lots of companies on blacklists for other companies too. So how can they fly out there, you know, install the system, help them install it, train their staff up? It's going to take a while still. But I think we're still going to beat these estimates. 150 systems by the end of this year. I predict probably 160, 170. And as the pandemic starts to subside, you know, as we kind of go back into normal life, what used to be normal life, I think there's going to be a lot of people adopting the Sapphire system, especially when optical genome mapping gets built into certain guidelines. This could be for prenatal screening, postnatal screening, diagnosis of certain cancers. And what about our beloved nano nozzle night, Joey Butler? What happens when the nano nozzle comes through? It may not be this year, but when it does come through, if we're able to actually do long read sequencing, short read sequencing as well, Oh my goodness. Anyways, I just finished the shift in a warehouse grinding because I want to buy some more bingo, baby. I'm actually looking to try and create more content as well. So I'm trying to save up as much money as possible, buy some stocks, but also reinvest in my business. I want to be able to get people who are going to screen the market, who are going to help me learn because I want to learn from other people too. And I want to create some banging content for YouTube and for all of you guys. So if you want to help me do this, please join my Patreon or you can join channel memberships. It's only 99 cents. It's just above my head. But if you're not not able to just you hitting like and click and subscribe on this video means the world to me also drop me some comments i want to know all of your thoughts think about bio nanogenomics think about the bigger picture talk to me and tell me it could be used in this industry too it could be used here it could be used there let's bounce around some ideas let's generate some new topics let's think about what could happen in the future because baby cytopia is coming and when it does come and when we take over the cytogenetic market this beautiful machine over here is going to be cash flowing for us what will we do with the money then will we acquire people also so what if it doesn't get to that point? What if more people keep coming towards us looking for acquisition? What if Illumina approach us? And what if they put a juicy premium on whatever the stock price is now? They put a massive premium on it. Anyways, this is not financial advice. It's for entertainment only. Tell me your thoughts and feelings. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. Mr. Investalot over and out, baby.